for the process. So good morning. As uh, Alex says, my name is Don Lindsay, and uh, I've been well, using QED for <coughs> a lot of years. And uh, so I thought what I would do today is uh, kind of give a little brief outline of how the sales and operations planning uh, process works. Uh, can I see a show of hands who uses SNOP in, uh, well, good. Oh, got one. That's good. So, uh, I hope some of you had the opportunity to uh, get access to a lot or some of the presentations that were made at the MUG presentation uh, two weeks ago in Detroit, or uh, where was it? Dearborn. That's probably Dearborn. And uh, Tom Roberts gave a uh, great keynote uh, presentation. There were about 34 uh, presentations, I think, on all sorts of uh, subjects. Uh, Marianne, uh, Marcus, Brent uh, Schultz, and I think Guido is going to give a presentation today on the uh, new AUX interface. So lots of uh, lots of good stuff came out of that uh, mug meeting, and if you have any opportunity to get a hold of the processes, uh, presentations, that would be great. Tom talked about the QED Enterprise platform, uh, data lakes, robotics. Uh, Pam just mentioned the adaptive uh, UX. We'll talk a little bit about analytics today, and then there's the uh, whole question of the digital transformation. There's a guy named Eric Kimberlin. I don't know if anybody uses uh, third stage consulting. He does some excellent uh, presentations on YouTube uh, about digital uh, transformation. So I thought uh, that would be interesting. I did pick up two interesting tidbits from the Dearborn presentations, there is no longer a service and support. Kind of shocked me, but uh, they have renamed that field service management. No, SSM is now FSM. And also, the supplier portal and supplier visualizations have been renamed to uh, demand and delivery. So if you hear those terms, uh, you can did that. So I give a series of <coughs> webinars for Alex on a monthly basis. And over the last couple of months, we've had the chance to talk about uh, dates in QED. We had a little session on supply chain tower functionality. Uh, Dynasys is uh, one of those tools, Connexus, EA Open, those kinds of things. Uh, QED purchasing, uh, service support. And like I say, today we'd like to talk a little bit about the sales and operation planning functionality uh, in QED. I uh, always like to mention that you turn idiomatic and nomothetic. Everybody know the definitions of idiomatic and nomothetic. Nomothetic is normal, average. It's a concept, and we'll talk a lot about concepts this morning. Uh, idiomatic means that you take that concept and you apply it at a detail level. So what we talk about in terms of inventory management, sales, forecasting, those are concepts, but we apply them at the part number level. So we've got to remember that we've got those. I ran across uh, Homer. <laughs> Homer is uh, one of my favorite uh, guys. And well, the supply chain recovery. We, and Pam put up a whole bunch of stuff about uh, supply chain and what a mess we're in. And, you know, we thought we were going to be solid, maybe not, and now we got to the fourth quarter of uh, 2021, and it's, it's just about as big a mess as, as it has uh, been. The uh, International Chamber of Shipping uh, put out a letter to the General Assembly of the United Nations 
65 million transport workers said to the General Assembly and all of the nation's uh, leaders that we've got, we've got some serious problems. If we don't solve the uh, shipping issues, the uh, lack of containers, Pam mentioned there's 75 ships sitting outside Long Beach and LAX, can't get unloaded. Uh, there's no pallets. There's a driver shortage in the UK. They can't find enough drivers to deliver gas to the uh, gas station. So there's uh, gas shortages. Bottlenecks. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about warehouse uh, complexity. So there's the pandemic has caused us all to look at our supply chain uh, differently. I saw an article just the other day that uh, individual companies like Home Depot. Costco, Walmart, they're actually leasing their own ships to get product into the uh, U.S. Somewhat tenuous problems there, but uh, it's gotten to the point where individual companies are starting to get into that process. And uh, it's going to continue into 2020. I ran across this other article uh, from industrial week and the speaker was talking about uh, China and China that was where we got our product from. Pam mentioned today that we get a lot of our product from uh, China. Before COVID we were paying $1,600 for a container. Now it's almost up to $20,000 a container to get a uh, product into the U.S. The pandemic has hit China big time in addition to us. 20% of their industrial sector companies have gone out of business. So what happens when uh, the air freight to get product in, you can't get it in a ship, you pay companies that were spending about $100,000 a month on their parts 18 months ago are now uh, spending more than that just on air freight. When China starts to recognize that the U.S. is no longer their primary uh, customer and they start selling to Africa and Asia, that's going to take away that whole process of getting product from uh, China. So we need to start thinking about this process of consolidating our understanding of that global supply chain in what we call service in or uh, <clears throat> sales and operations planning. Uh, this is just from October 3rd, this is just like last week. Uh, I live in Chino, California, and uh, there, if anybody else lives in the Inland Empire, there's a solid line of trucks 24 hours a day in and out of the Inland Empire. Uh, from 2019 to 2021, all of the demand patterns changed for the Inland Empire. Uh, in 2019, 21 of the top 100 uh, logistics leases existed in Murillo Valley, in Montana. <coughs> there is over 600 million square feet of storage and it's 98% full. There is movement afoot to get 40 million more square feet. About 40% of the nation's uh, consumer goods come through the Inlet Empire to go out to the Midwest and East Coast. The Ontario Airport is the largest air freight airport in the United States. So we've got a lot of challenges around it. So today what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about some of the sales and operations planning concepts, a little history, and then we'll dig into how does QAD actually uh, deal with sales and operations planning. So how do you define sales and operations planning? Well, APEX says it's an integrated business management process 
through uh, which the executive leadership team uh, continually focuses and concentrates the organization on the achievement of its the sales plan. <coughs> Done well, sales and operations planning also lends itself to uh, an effective supply chain. In the 1950s and 1960s, uh, companies like Case, uh, Black & Decker, came up with this new thing called MRP. And we've talked many times about MRP and how it operates. By the 1970s, Ollie White had started to understand that the material and capacity constraints for an organization need senior management attention. And so he started to talk about a concept called production planning. And then in the uh, 80s, Dick Lynn, who is also a uh, guru in the area of supply, uh, sales and operations planning, uh, coined the term sales operation planning and started to talk about how that technique could assist organizations. I just uh, noticed yesterday at Pippin Dinner with Alex that Dick Lynn has uh, married up with Carol Patak and Chad Smith of the Demand Driven Institute to come up with a new book on sales and operations planning. So I'm, I've got some reading to do uh, over the next couple of uh, months. So what does SNOP do? Well, it supports the business plan. It ensures that the strategic plans of the organization are realistic before being implemented down at the production floor or out into the purchasing uh, area. It effectively manages uh, change management and allows us to do performance management and is that tool that allows us to focus and align the organization. It all starts off with demand management, which means that you're going to have to do demand forecasting. Does anybody know how to do exponential spooking? Uh, Regression analysis? All those kinds of things. So you've got to have some uh, demand forecasting that feeds into a production plan, a marketing plan, and a sales plan. And then you drive that all into sales and operations planning. So you consolidate the demand, then you arrive at a supply plan, both in terms of production and in terms of procurement. And that allows us to plan the production, master scheduling, and demand planning scheduling. Uh, Pam had mentioned the MSW, Master Scheduling Workbench, what do you use? The MS, no. That's part of this uh, output. Resources in terms of facilities, labor, cash, we'll talk about resource management and the SNOP uh, function and inventory control, investments, channel plans, shipment plans, and for distribution. So the sales operations planning structure incorporates the entire uh, organization. This other gentleman, Eric, who is uh, Eric Wilson, who is associated with the IBF, is anybody familiar with the IBF Institute of Business Forecasting? Eric uh, does a lot of that he's kind of their SNOP guru. And he divides the sales and operations planning down into strategic, the actual SNOP functions, distribution and mass production scheduling, which we'll cover next month in our uh, monthly webinar, and production planning. That gives us our horizons across the uh, planning horizon in terms of anywhere from today, two, three to five years out in the future. And there's basically a cyclical process for each one of these areas. Sales and operations planning is done on a monthly basis. Strategic planning, business planning, normally on a yearly basis, and then we do master scheduling, distribution requirements planning, and production planning uh, on a daily, some of us even actually on an hourly basis. So, 
the outputs of these areas or these hierarchies are the strategic plans for budgets, uh, the sales and operations plan deals with demand, inventory, supply chain, and then we get down into master production scheduling and our detailed schedules. So if you've got an opportunity to look at any of that stuff that uh, Eric has coming out of the uh, IBF, very highly recommended. The sales operation planning, another one of my favorite guys, is Alan Dunn. Alan has been around the uh, Apex environment for 30 years, and he teaches at Caltech. He's got a whole series of programs, and he gave a uh, webinar just the other day on the uh, sales and operations planning for the Grand Rapids chapter of Apex. And he basically says it's really a pretty simple process. You gather the data, you create a sales plan. Out of that sales plan, you create a capacity and a supply plan. You then review that along with senior management, and then you publish that executive process so that drives the organization. There's a lot of issues that are uh, encountered when you're doing a sales and operations planning uh, implementation. Uh, lack of communication, lack of senior management support, uh, lack of technology, insufficient training skills. Sales and operations planning is a, uh, is a profession, as Alan says, and people need to understand how that's going to affect their daily uh, operation. So lots of challenges for us. As Alan says, 10% is technology, what we'll talk about today. 90% is senior management support and change uh, management. Gardner, all of us are familiar with Gardner, they, he, they've come up with a five-step uh, sales and operation maturity model. The first is you're using spreadsheets. Now, how many use spreadsheets? Yeah, all of you are using it. Second step is you're starting to use maybe QEDs, uh, forecasting tools, maybe you're using the MSW, PSW thing. Uh, step three is you've actually got a process in place to balance supply and demand across the entire organization. We mentioned the fact that uh, Dick Lynn and Carol Patak and Chad Smith are now publishing a new book on sales and operations planning through the Demand Driven Institute. And then finally, in stage five, you've got an organization that has coordinated decision making across the entire product line, across the entire uh, organizational structure, and it's 24-7 visibility to senior management as to what is occurring. Most companies are sitting at one or two and hopefully are getting to uh, three. I uh, ran across this one. This is from the Mundadak uh, chapter down in, uh, I think it's Louisiana. And they came up with this uh, tiered approach. These are the sounding, the foundations of what uh, Gardner says you should have in order to move across that superior, uh, <coughs> matrix that we uh, just talked about. The first starts off with a tiered planning approach. So in your organization, in your data structure, you've got a, st a strategic uh, area, you've got tactical and operational levels within that organization. I give a little talk about uh, January on dates in QED. How important are dates in QED? So you need a tiered and controlled planning horizon. You've got to have integrated sub-processes like the business plan to the demand plan to the supply chain to the uh, product strategy. And those all need to be consistent across 
the entire process. So does anybody have problems with different part numbers, different families, those kinds of things? That all has to be uh, addressed when you're going to get to the point of a good SMLP process. Leadership. Leadership accountability answers the question, who are the owners of the SNOP process? From the executive team, to the executive uh, sponsor, to the SNOP process owner, who understands all of the aspects, all of the tools that we'll talk about, down to the demand planning team, the forecasting, the purchasing and supply team. That whole team should have a specific job description that de defines how they're going to operate within this sales and operations uh, planning. Analytics. Analytics within the sales and operation are key to your success. Uh, Python. Uh, lots of math. I ran across this great uh, programming languages. Artificial intelligence. Neural networks. All the things that uh, Tom Robertson Pam talked about. These all are going to be part and parcel of that sales and operations planning process. And then, fourthly, you've got to understand performance measurement. I can't improve my sales and operations planning process unless I'm measuring and understand the performance of my organization against those sales operations plans come down from the first tier cost down into second tier and third tier so that the senior management starts to gain uh, confidence in the integrity of that SNOP process. You're probably going to need grids and graphs and pictures because senior management doesn't like reading numbers. Anybody remember Trump? He doesn't like numbers, he likes pictures. So pictures are a good way to convey this information as to the status and the plans associated with that service or sales and operations planning uh, process. I ran across this, uh, the effects of visualization levels on cognitive equivalency structures as adults from the uh, <coughs> College of uh, Psychology in 1979 talks about how visually learn and deal with data. And QAD's got lots of these tools. Here's uh, just the standard dashboards that are included within uh, QAD. Lots and lots of uh, tools to be able to visually present this data. Change management. I said 60% of SNOP is change management. Everything changes on a daily basis. That's why you review it on a monthly basis. 30% process improvement, making sure you're doing it the right thing, senior management buying any. 10%, as Alan Dunn says, is just technique, the tools that you're going to use. So you need to uh, have acceptance and you need to train your employees on how you're going to do that. Uh, I've been associated with Apex for many, many years, and I've had many uh, gurus and teachers in uh, the field of the Apex body of knowledge. And here is one I was sorry to see. Uh, Tom Wallace just passed away uh, in March. And Tom was one of those uh, gentlemen who started the whole discussion of sales and operations planning and was one of the true pioneers in that process. He has many, many books that I would highly recommend you uh, get a hold of, especially this one over here, Sales and Operations Planning, an executive guide. That is the Bible on how to uh, move into a viable sales and operations planning uh, process. Another one I thought you guys might enjoy, uh, if anybody has gone out to the ERP graveyard scorecard, I always find this one interesting. This traces all of the uh, ERP systems that have been bought and sold in for, you know, Oracle and 
all those that you see here, here we are, UAD. Dynasys, we bought that back in 2016. We've got Precision, which they now call Taxstone, uh, BizGen, FOP Systems. So that's a, that's a good, uh, interesting website to go visit if you're interested. As we always recommend for any function in QED, if you have addressed the SNOP process, you need to, number one, read the documentation. That's important. You should have somebody that you could ask questions of. I'd be happy to do that. And the third is you actually have to go in and you have to hit the keys in a test database. You've got to understand how all of this interfaces and what is going to happen when you do a sales forecast or when you put in a uh, source matrix or whatever you're going to do with the uh, SNOP process. This is basically the gestalt of SNOP, the entire process. You need to read and understand that. Sales and operation planning is both a strategic and a tactical tool. So it runs across the entire gamut of the organization. This is the main menu for the SNOP. Uh, it's under supply chain. Uh, we won't talk about warehouse purchasing or distribution or EDI just uh, today, but we're going to concentrate on production line plans, resource plans, and the operation planning. Uh, menu. This is the production plan, plan, uh, plan menus. This is where you're going to create your production line, shipments, orders, inventory backlog. You've got your resource planning. This is basically the apex rough cut capacity planning and RRP resource requirements planning tool that's embedded into QED. And then you've got operations planning system setup, family setup items, family processing, uh, the enterprise operations plan, we'll spend some time there, and then simulation plans and performance measurements. So all the tools that Gardner talks about and Alan Dunn talks about are embedded in the QED menus, which you already have in your possession. So, system setup, uh, when I talked about the Dates in QED, uh, I talked about the calendar cross-reference build, and we'll talk about the operations plan control. The 33.1.24 control files, everyone is familiar with control files, so SOP also has a control file process. It basically says, are you going to use operations plan? Yes. So if you do, if you check that box, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens in the background that sets up your ability to use all of these menus and interfaces with the new production orders, uh, product structures, those kinds of uh, backgrounds. And then here, the maximum weeks coverage, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, that is a key field in the sales operations planning process. You really have to uh, understand and control what that weeks of coverage means for your organization. Uh, there's a little checkbox here for how you handle holidays and whether you're going to use rounding. So as generalized codes, you need to pay attention to the PT part type and the PT group type as to the organization of your data. The 33.1.4 calendar cross-reference, you can use sales and operations planning on a monthly basis. Mm, questionable. You want to use sales and operations planning in association with the financial period because this is what senior management uses to measure the process and the plans of the organization. So, uh, you need to run this uh, at least every week or so to take the dates out of the sales and operations planning and marry them up with the financial periods that you've got in the general ledger. 
Uh, multiple domains, if you're dealing with multiple domains, again, the key is consistency of codes, sites, part numbers, bombs, families. They all have to be consistent across the entire organization, from domain to entity to site to location. They all need to say the same thing, or you're going to have lots of problems with sales and operations plan. Uh, the, one of the key fields in the 1.1.13 site maintenance is that domain field, because that is going to be a key field in how the SNOP process uh, deals with its functionality. The operations plan includes two major planning levels, a family planning level and an end item planning level. Because you want to be able to plan at a family or a group level, but you're also going to want to be able to plan at the individual part number level within a particular site. So, the family invitation need to do this operations planning module data. So the structure that we looked at in the uh, menu is not necessarily the exact sequence of events you need to take. You need to go through and you need to do the setup required from the uh, operations planning menu and then you can go back and you can uh, do the family setup. So you've got your uh, family data implementation then you define your hierarchies, and then here is the key. This is your target inventory level. MRP runs off of a sales forecast. Sales and operations planning runs off of a target inventory level. You can also uh, track family production costs in that family uh, update, and again, you need to read the uh, so, uh, the user guide. So you define family hierarchy so that you can understand the relationships and model those relationships inside QED. Then tie your end items and subfamilies into those so you've got a structure of that process. And then identify the marketing sites that are going to generate a uh, sales forecast for that sales and operations plan. So here's just a little example of what you might uh, find for that. When you set up the hierarchies, this is basically defining your independent demand. So if you go back to the apex body of knowledge, you've got two types of demand, independent and dependent. Dependent bills of material, independent, anything to do with the customer. So you need to define how that uh, independent demand is going to be uh, done, you can set up generic hierarchies, you can adjust for specific uh, sites, copy planning years, all the functionality that you find in uh, cost uh, sets, all the functionality you find in uh, forecast simulation, you can find similar kinds of tools in uh, sales and operation planning. So here is 33.3.1 family hierarchy maintenance. This is where you define your family and subfamily. So nomothetic, you got to do this process. Idiomatic, this is where you build it. You build it right here. And here it shows you a forecast percentage of that subfamily to the family level. So you want to be real careful about what that value is in the 33.3.1. <clears throat> With all tools within the SOP, you usually got an inquiry, a report, and a winner used. Common uh, QED functionality. You can also input the cost of a family in the 33.3.1. However, be cautious, the system does not use family item cost for operations planning activity. So it doesn't pay attention to what the cost is. It only pays attention to what the forecast and that target inventory level is and your sales forecast. But it's always important because you're dealing with senior management 
to be able to translate what you're doing at the sales operation planning level into money. You need to talk their language. So although this does not actually have any functionality from a reporting point of view, it's, uh, it's critical. You've got uh, family hierarchy change. You can change, add, delete the relationships with those. Uh, I've found when I do this, that I play with this a lot because you really need to model this uh, exactly. Uh, family processing talks about the process of global consolidation, production management, and then what we call family plan roll up. The global uh, consolidation basically takes this information and generates and shows a global sales forecast, target inventory levels based on those target inventories you put in, uh, site and production due, and then uh, projected quantity on hand and weeks of coverage, which we'll talk uh, about. The 33.3 7.3, global production maintenance. This is where you're actually going to create that global plan. So uh, this little thing comes up on a lot of screens in sales operations planning. It says, warning, you're going to create operations plan record, or sales plan record, or production plan record. So you need to be very understanding of what that means in terms of generating this data. So this is what you're going to get. This looks familiar. This is typical 22.1 kind of stuff. You can add your uh, schedule out across the uh, planning horizon. It calculates a projected quantity on hand and what your coverage is going to be for this uh, family. You can also do the family plan roll-up. So you can explode it and then you can roll it up or explode it, roll it up many times back and forth. So the, the roll-ups are required throughout the operations planning and use the family plan roll-up to accomplish that. So you're going to use this uh, family plan roll-up quite a bit. Then you've got the explosion, which calculates your dependent demand for all the subfamilies. It distributes that demand within the family based on the percentage forecast we saw. And then converts those quantities to the unit of measure of the target subfamily. So again, you're going to have to very specifically uh, define what those units of measure are. And then it generates sales forecast demand for end item products. So this is a very important uh, tool within that sales operation planning process. Uh, 33, 15, 21, Operations Plan Resource Inquiry. This is going to give you your picture of what that means in terms of the resources required to produce your plan. <clears throat> and then we've got the end item uh, implementation. So you define your families, your subfamilies, and now you're going to optimize the target inventory and production levels at the end item level and develop production schedules, identifying any variances between actual and plan. So most operations plans are at the site level. They're all associated with a production or a product line, and they're grouped for family levels into subfamily and families. We, you know, we talked about the importance of those units of measure. Uh, end item. The end item uh, consolidation, this is uh, source matrix, line allocations, and target levels at that end item level. So the uh, item site data, this is where you define the items for the sites. It's so used for family plans, operations plans, and the performance measurement process. And it uh, is done through this 33.1.33 item site maintenance maintenance either for sales forecast, actual sales, actual production, production due, or beginning quantity on hand. So again, that's why you do it in a test database so you can run all these things and understand what they're going to do in terms of your sales operations plan. 
item site data consolidation. So if you've got data coming from even non-QED databases, I'm sure some of us deal with uh, <coughs> somebody who's got SAP or Oracle or Infor or whatever, you can take that data and bring it into QED through this uh, item consolidation. Then you're going to calculate the weeks of coverage. And this is one of those key calculations. What does this minimum, average, and maximum uh, weeks of coverage mean to the way that the operations plan is going to generate its uh, forecast? So, <clears throat> this uh, weeks of coverage, you remember we saw that in the operations plan 33.1.24. That's just the default, but you can use 33.5.1 to set it at an individual level, and then if you're really ambitious, you can set the coverage by date. So you can actually model weeks of coverage across the planning horizon with different weeks of coverage depending on the start and the end date. So that takes a fair amount of uh, understanding to get uh, the system processed. Uh, source matrices allow you to define where the demand supply relationship uh, is coming from. So the item source matrix defines the nature of the supply demand relationship. So you really got to uh, understand what that means in terms of setting up the items, what marketing site you've got, what supply site it's going to have. If you want to, you can use the start and stop dates. Uh, percentage, this is the percentage of supply that that particular supply site is going to give for that item. Uh, and then you've got a whole bunch of transportation and lead time functionality in there. So setting up those demands a real detailed understanding of your organization. The uh, matrix explosion basically explodes the link between the long-term planning and the short to mid-term planning through the 33.13.8. It calculates target inventory, calculates production due dates, uses MRP order policies, key consideration, uh, uses planning time fence in 1 of order 7 and 17, and includes an actual uh, inventory calculation. The sales data maintenance, 33.13.13, uh, again, gives you the warning. If you get in there, you're going to generate uh, data. You have to understand that. You can symbol it if you want to. Uh, so this allows you to put in a sales forecast and drive actual sales. You can do the same thing with inventory in 13.17, and you can do the same with production data in 13.21. Line allocations, if you uh, are familiar with uh, repetitive, in repetitive 5.5.1.17, schedule order percentage maintenance in MRP, same kind of a concept. This allows you to define where that uh, production line allocation is going to come from as a percentage of the total. In 33.5.17, line allocation maintenance is the actual screen that you use to do that. And you can see you can set it up so that uh, a particular site item may have multiple sources of production lines for uh, that, per that uh, item. Uh, I saw one person raise their hand when they used MSW. Uh, you have to learn how to use MSW. It's just to give it. This is the best thing that has happened to QED uh, since I've been around. I've been around a couple of years. This basically takes 20 some odd menus, screens, reports, tools, and combines them into one thing. So if you're a planner, it's, it's a godsend. It's just a wonderful tool. You've got master scheduling, production scheduling, shortage reports, you've got the action measures, item master, sales, it just goes on and on. It is intimidating, 
you need to know what you're doing. You just can't jump into it. You've got to have a little bit of planning background, but uh, that is a tool that you really need to uh, understand. You can set these target inventory levels one of three ways. Easy way, but to set them calculated. Two, you can base it based on manually recorded quantities. So if you want to take the time and effort to go in and, and do that, you can. Or you can calculate the target inventory levels based on an upcoming sales forecast in terms of this weeks of coverage. This is the tracking of a family production cost. Okay, so you can track the family production cost just like you could at the uh, other level. And this, again, is not used by the system, but it does give you that visibility of what that cost uh, is. Items consolidation. So if you use multiple sites or domains, you can consolidate all of that information into the sales and operations planning. 33.13.1, transaction load. Here you can use uh, information out of other sites and consolidate it into uh, the sales operations plan. This is the data minutes, and here we looked at a way to use either sales, actual sales, actual production, etc., to update that data. Then you've got the item data consolidation in 33.13.6. Here, I highlighted this because this can be very important. Uh, are you going to delete everything that you had in there? Or are you going to leave what's in there and load data in uh, against that previously dated, loaded data? So you've got to kind of understand what that relationship. So those two uh, check boxes are pretty important. Uh, the enterprise, enterprise operations plan, okay, this is kind of the end product of sales and operations planning. The enterprise operations plan, planning at family or end item levels, you've got demand consolidation, uh, you can calculate uh, production demands, target inventory, uh, inner site supply and demand if you use DRP. Uh, it's got resource requirements planning and then performance and simulation planning. So a lot of menus available in that uh, module. If you're going to do this, you need to set up the enterprise family setup, item setups, percentages, source matrix, all of that additional information before you uh, come into this. So you've got uh, mod modules that interface with uh, general ledger, DRP, items, resource plans, work orders, repetitive. You've got the new production orders if you're dealing with 2020. And then the data associated with each one of those. So I've talked about it before. ERP is a data base that needs to be totally 100% accurate. It doesn't intend you to have blank data or inaccurate data. You have to have all of the data in order for this uh, process to uh, work. Okay. Uh, there's the operations planning work for. It basically follows that. So if you understand that operation, you've got the sales and operations planning down pretty well. So we talked about the uh, setups and the family process. The enterprise operations planning menu uh, has to do with the operations plan, line and site utilization, explosions and approvals, and operations uh, targets. So uh, the 13.15.1, this is where you're going to build your schedule. So you can build the schedule in that. 13.5, you can do it at a product line level as opposed to the operations plan uh, level. And then you use the plan explosion to drive these down into the explosion uh, process that we, that we covered. There's an operations plan approval process where you can approve 
this. So you've got senior management, you've got uh, sales and operations planning uh, leadership. All of those can be uh, addressed electronically. You can uh, use then the 13.15.17. And this is uh, kind of important because there's a gap between MRP and SNOP because MRP and DRP generate orders for sales forecasts. I mentioned before that sales operations planning uses target inventory. So when the explosion process happens in MRP, it doesn't recognize target inventory. So this function allows the system to take that in consideration when it's doing its uh, explosion. So you need to run this 33, 15, 17 on a regular basis. Line utilization, uh, you can define the line utilization. Uh, if we go back to Apex, efficiency utilization equals productivity. Productivity times uh, available capacity equals rated capacity. So that's what you want to use for your line uh, utilization. You can input this. This is a great uh, menu, 33, 15, 9. This gives you visibility as to the sales forecast, the site production, uh, line schedule quantities, projected quantity on hand, weeks of coverage. This is probably one of the most used tools in the SNOP process. Resource planning. The resource planning is basically APEX resource requirements planning and rough cut capacity planning built inside. So you can build uh, resources, you define cash, facilities, whatever you want. Then uh, you've got a product line resource bill that you can build at that level. And basically, this is just a simple spreadsheet that shows you how rough capacity planning works. You've got a part number, another part number. It ex extrapolates that down, sums it up, and gives you the resource requirement. That's exactly what uh, QED is going to uh, do for you. So you've got a product line resource summary report that you can use. This is uh, a great tool, so it's capacity over and under load. Uh, you've got an item resource bill, so you can actually build bills of resource by item in addition to product lines. So this is the detail, so you can look at how much of a resource is a particular part number going to use. Uh, then the product line plans, okay, this allows you to create a product line plan, it allows you to create a shipment plan, it allows you to ship a uh, created orders plan, a production plan maintenance that you can uh, do, and then an inventory and backlog uh, plan. Simulation planning is important in sales operations planning because there's so many reiterations of this data, as you can see, that you need to be able to set up a simulation process. If you're, again, familiar with cost sets or uh, simulation forecast in 22.7, uh, you'll find that same thing. So you basically uh, copy a plan to a simulation plan, and then you do simulation plan maintenance, so this is where you're going to test out what you're doing is uh, correct. You can do it at the line level if you want to, and then you can apply those line utilization percentages that we uh, talked about earlier. Performance management, this is what encourages senior management to trust what you're doing. So, QD has a whole set of tools in sales, inventory, production, and basic overall performance uh, processes. So, this is going to give you that ability to take quantities from completed work orders, repetitive schedules, purchase orders, sales, import, uh, inventory balances, and report it against that sales and operations plan that you developed. 33.19.2 is sales data report, 19.5 is inventory, 19.8 is production, and 19.24 is overall the performance report. So this is probably one of the primary tools that you would use to report. And again, 
don't show senior management this report. Make it pretty. Give it a graph. Make a picture of it so you can uh, present that. Security. Security in sales operation and plumbing is critical because you don't want just anybody getting involved in that process. This is company sensitive data. So uh, use your roles, permissions, etc. to define that. Lots of utilities out there that you can use. You can recalculate uh, summary reports, uh, product line updates. Uh, again, you need to test out how those uh, actually work. And if you're not familiar with sales and operations planning, even from a conceptual point of view, but more at a QED level, process maps are great. They're just great tools to understand what that uh, mean. So, investigate the process uh, maps. You've got a whole set of new menus you're going to have to deal with. You've got uh, production plans, resource plans, operations plans, simulations, performance reports. So there's a, a fair amount of uh, reading and understanding to do. But the key is read that document. Read the user guide. That is going to give you the result of what this whole process is. So we covered a whole lot of stuff today. Uh, hopefully, you can take a look at the sales operations planning process in QED. You already own it. You don't have to go buy Connexus or either Open or even Dynasys. You've got the tools there. The key is what we covered is 10% of the problem. The other 90% is senior management, buy-in, etc. So, lots of resources out there. You can look at this uh, at your level. Lots of uh, good APEC stuff that I made reference to. And uh, Alex has lots of loaders that can assist with that. Uh, you even need a couple of loaders for the new sales and operations planning. I'm sure Alex will be... Uh, like to talk to you about that. So, any questions? Big, big subject, but it is your success in ERP. You're not going to be successful unless you've got control over that top process from strategic down to sales operations. So, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Please don't forget to fill in the forms, uh, feedback forms. And then if anybody wants to get a, a digital copy of this presentation, give us uh, your business card. We can email you. Thank you.